nice or something like that. If it's real yellow, it would be filigree, this type of thing. So you look at the color. Okay. Then you're going to use the refractometer and do a protein concentration. If it's less than one gram, a deciliter on there, that's usually consistent with the pure transidate. <coughs> When you start to get above that, you're going into what we call the modified transidate, and if it keeps going, you're going to get into an exidate. Okay? Then we're going to look at our specific gravity. Okay? In other words, if it's got a bunch of inflammatory cells and that type of thing, or neoplastic cells, and what's going to happen to specific gravity? It's going to go up. Okay? The normal specific gravity in plasma is very low. I mean, abdominal fluid is very low. But if we've got cells in there and things like that, breaking down, also secreting things, it's going to increase your specific gravity. Okay. And then we want to look at the, spin it down, look at the sediment, and look for total nuclear cells and red blood cells in there. And also look at the cell morphology. Why are we looking at the cell morphology? What if it's a neoplasia? How are you going to figure that out? we got to look at it, right? Got to use that thing you call a microscope, you know, to look through, you know. A lot of us forget about those things, right? Did y'all do much of the microscope and microanatomy? No. As far as I'm concerned, that's a sin. <laughs> I mean, would it help in pathology if you knew how to use the microscope and microanatomy? See, I used to teach microanatomy, so I knew. We did a lot of lab work when I was teaching stuff, okay? And one of the things is, until I can stick my slide into the computer, my computer, computer tells me, oh, you've got such, 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 such in here, you got to be able to recognize that stuff, don't you? And see it, right? Now, if you've got one of those digital images that you have the camera on your scope, you know, you look on the computer, that's different. Okay? Right? And so, uh, as far as your protein-specific gravity, you use that refractometer is the best way to do that. Using the cells, there's various ways to do that. You can use an automated cell counter depending on what type of fluid it is. Or you can use, you ever heard of the UNIPET system? So we used to do that in microanatomy when I was teaching it too. The UNIPET system is a little body to dilute your sample and look at it under the scope on a micro, mic, uh, micro, uh, excuse me, must anyway, but hemocytomic has got the scale on there so you can do cell counts and all this type of thing to look at, okay? Also, you can look at the cellular morphology when you stain the smear. And again, this is where you need to use a microscope. Okay? Or either if you're using a computer, it's hooked up to a microscope. So you can see it. All right? In other words, like I say, how are you going to know if it's, uh, this fluid is a neoplastic process? You're going to put it in the computer, and the computer is going to say, hey, you got a neoplastic process? Or you're going to have to look at it. You're going to use your eyes, right? If the computer did all that for us, why would we need to get a degree in veterinary medicine, right? Okay, so basically that's one. You have to forgive me getting on this, but I get really tired of them not doing the basic stuff in the earlier year, like first year, so you don't get hit so hard when you get up into your clinic rears and stuff. Okay. <laughs> now, if the fluid is, looks like it, it's just kind of thick, looks very cellular, you can go ahead and make direct smears from that and look at them under the microscope. If it's kind of clearish and it doesn't look like it has a whole lot of cells, then you're going to have to spin it down and do a sediment smear to be able to see enough stuff. Okay. And uh, transidates, let's stop here in a minute here. Transidates basically is an excess accumulation of normal fluid. In other words, it's a filtrated plasma without the cells. Okay. Also, without all the protein that you can see sometimes also. And they can usually result from obstructive phenomena. In other words, what if I have a, oh, a pulmonary edema or something like that? Will that interfere with blood flow through the vessels and the lungs and stuff? And so this fluid will back up and it can diffuse out into the tissues and stuff and go out into body cavities and things like that. Now again, if it is a transidate and it remains in the body cavity long enough, it can be irritating. And what do you think you're going to get when you start irritating the body cavity wall? You're going to get an inflammatory response. So if those transidates stay around long enough, it will end up with an exudate. Okay? And again, 
First off, you're going to get higher protein concentrations. That's a modified transudate. Then when you start to see a bunch of neutrophils and things coming out in there, you're going into an exudate. Okay? Now, I'm not going to be able to finish all of this, but you all need to go through this. Okay, we've already done the uh, second thing as far as, uh, the first one as far as cytology. We did some of the lab as far as cytology is concerned. So go ahead and read through this fluid things. The last one is on, uh, excuse me, vaginal cytology, which you all will get, uh, they usually have me come lecture on it in the uh, medicine course. I just finished doing that this week with, my, with the juniors, okay. But uh, if you all want some time and you're available and you just want to get together and go through the stuff off hours, I'll be glad to come and do it with you, okay. But that's basically our time for now, and uh, yeah, hopefully everything will go all right. Okay, and uh, there. <coughs> pardon me. As far as the final exam is concerned, the multiple choice questions will all be on the new material. Okay, your some of your, your cases will be on new material, but they're also will be comprehensive in that. I'll give you a case, and you have to interpret the hemogram, interpret the leukogram, interpret the urinalysis, and clinical chemistry. So the file in that way is comprehensive. It's not going to be the little details, it's going to be interpreting those things, okay? In other words, if I look at my, and I have a leukocytosis characterized by mature neutrophilia and immature neutrophilia, what have I got? Inflammation, right? If I have a leukopenia that's characterized by a mature neutropenia and immature neutrophilia, that's a degenerative left shift. So I need to be able to interpret those things like that. If I have a sample and my liver enzymes are sky high, you ought to be able to tell me that I have or damage or cholestasis, depending on what those enzymes and things are. Okay? So in other words, it's you know, it's not going to do any good to forgot everything you learned in hematology or anything like that when you get next year in clinics, right? No. So basically, you need to be able to put the stuff together. But like I say, the new material will be on what we've covered as far as it's going to be on the information we covered since the last exam. And that includes your serum chemistry, includes your, uh, excuse me, your liver, pancreas, <coughs> And that's basically most of it on the new material, isn't it? Y'all know, I mean, my mind's not working very well today. I'm trying to finish my grandson, help him finish up his credit recovery program, and uh, had to have, uh, to do the final, he had to have teacher's permission, and unfortunately, that was about 7.30 at night, and uh, we emailed the lady, but she never emailed back. And he got to finish it today, or the whole thing's mute. And after going through as much stuff as he went through, I'm afraid I might have to go speak to the teacher a little bit if uh, she doesn't let him finish that final exam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, I just have to use the voice. <laughs> so my daughter said I used to terrify her teachers. I never raised my voice to any of her teachers. It doesn't make any difference, Mom, use the voice. <laughs> they get scared to death of me. So. <laughs>